This is Omali, and it's a pudding from Egypt with an interesting story. Legend has it that in 13th century Egypt, the wife of a sultan had him murdered. In the power struggle that followed, his second wife plotted to secure the throne for her son, and had his first wife killed. To celebrate her son Ali succeeding the throne, she had the chefs put together this pudding and distributed it to the public. It was so popular it gained the name Omali, or in English, Mother of Ali. Whatever the story, this pudding is a perfect example of a simple yet delicious Middle Eastern dessert. Hey everyone, I'm Obi, a home cook who wants to get you cooking authentic and delicious Middle Eastern food. Every week I cover a new dish from the region, and I break it down so you can replicate it perfectly in your home kitchen. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see new Middle Eastern recipes every week. Now this recipe is really easy to put together, and unlike other bread puddings, it doesn't go soggy and mushy. For a shortcut, I'm going to be using some store-bought croissants, which give it a great texture. They're soaked with a simple sweetened milk mixture and topped with nuts and sultanas. Before we get started, I want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. It's been a crazy few weeks in which we've ballooned from 1,500 to over 15,000 subscribers, and I want to thank every single one of you. With all that said, let's jump right in and make this. Omali is usually made with a thin type of pastry called golesh, and yes, it's the same name of the dish we made last week, but this is a different pastry. It's an almost see-through pastry that when soaked goes soft and tender. It's really hard to get hold of though, and you can get a pretty much identical result using puff pastry, which is what we'll be using today. You could bake your own puff pastry into sheets, but this recipe works surprisingly well with store-bought croissants. I'm using regular store-bought croissants which are quite soft, but if you can get some real crispy ones from a bakery, it will really make a difference. Another option is to use palmiers, which also give a great result, but bear in mind that it will end up sweeter than normal. To prepare the croissants, I'll be using a bread knife to slice it into chunks. First, I will remove the corners or ears, as they tend to have a crispier texture. Next, I'm going to slice the rest of the croissant in half, and then slice it into bite-sized portions. We want to expose as much of the inner surface area as we can. For this recipe, you'll need about 450 grams or 16 ounces of croissants which for my store-bought ones worked out to 13 pieces, though it will differ for you. Here's what you want your sliced croissant pieces to look like. Once you're done slicing them all, you'll have a mini mountain of pastry like this. What we'll be doing with these is baking them in the oven, where I want as much of the croissant to crisp up as possible. To do that, I've lined a baking sheet with some greaseproof paper, and I'm going to be placing my pieces of croissant on it in a single layer. Each piece needs to be rotated, so that the pale inner part of the croissant is facing upwards, and there should be no overlap. I ended up filling three trays with my croissant pieces. When ready, they should go into an oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius, or 350 degrees Fahrenheit, to bake for 6-8 to eight minutes. Keep your eye on them so they don't burn, and when they look like this, pull them out. They should be evenly golden all over, and have a really crispy texture. Because they've baked and crisped up, they'll be firmer and won't go mushy when they are in the milk. Next up we'll prepare the toppings or fixings which we'll place in the puddings. The classic choices are nuts, sultanas and coconut, though it's completely up to you what you put in them. For the sultanas, I've got these plump golden Iranian sultanas, which are some of the best you can get in the world. But you can easily substitute them with raisins or any other dried fruit. In terms of coconut, I've got some desiccated or finely shredded coconut which gives a great coconut flavour, but none of the fibrous texture it can sometimes have. The last important topping is nuts, and you can use any nuts you like, but hazelnuts and almonds would be the classic choice. To give them some extra oomph, I've toasted them in the oven till they turn this golden colour, and here's how I did it. First, I took some whole hazelnuts and rubbed them to remove their skin. Once cleaned, I used a chef's knife to chop them into largish chunks. This was the size I was aiming for. The other nut I wanted to use was flaked almonds, which are already cut into thin slices, but you could also chop some peeled almonds into chunks as well. I placed the nuts on a greaseproof paper lined baking sheet, then evenly spread them out as much as possible. When ready, I placed them in a 180 degree Celsius or 350 degree Fahrenheit oven to bake for about 4 to 6 minutes. When they reached this golden colour, I pulled them out and set them aside. The final component to make is the sweetened milk. In Egypt, this would be made with buffalo milk, which has a high fat content. So in its place, I'll be using Jersey cow milk instead. I really recommend buying this if you can find it, as it's a lot more rich in flavour and texture. If not, you can swap out 50 millilitres or 1.5 fluid ounces of the milk for heavy cream. In a large saucepan, I'm adding 1 litre or 33 fluid ounces of Jersey milk. To sweeten the milk, I'm adding 2 kinds of sugar, 
First, I'm adding 75 grams or 2.5 ounces of regular granulated sugar, and then I'm adding in 75 grams or 2.5 ounces of light brown sugar. This is the kind used in cookies, and it will give the milk a caramel flavour. If you don't have this, you can use more white sugar in its place. Turn the heat up to high and give it a quick stir, then let the milk come to a boil. As soon as it foams up and boils like this, remove it from the heat and it's ready to use. Assembling the pudding is pretty easy, and it all comes down to how you want to serve it. You can go for a large serving dish, or as I'm doing, individual portions. These are oven safe baking dishes, and doing it this way will allow me to customise which toppings go in each portion. We'll start by filling each dish with the pieces of baked croissant. Each dish should be filled to the top, and you should try place your pieces so you can fit as much in as possible. If it doesn't all fit in, don't worry, we're still going to add more. Now it's time for the toppings. I'm doing two with sultanas and nuts, and two plain ones. I added a heap tablespoon of each topping into the baking dish, trying to distribute it evenly. The coconut can be added now, or it can be dusted over the finished dish. Next we'll add the sweetened milk, and it should still be hot from the stove when you pour it over the croissants. Just divide it equally over each portion, and pour it over all of your croissant pieces. They will absorb the milk and soften. When that happens, just push the pieces down slightly to ensure that they all evenly soak. I added in extra pieces of croissant wherever I can, and you should add enough until your pastry is just emerging from the milk like this. Make sure to get some milk on any extra pieces you added so they don't burn. Next we'll top the pudding with some cream, and usually it will be a form of clotted cream called ishta. In its place I am using some extra thick jersey cream, which has a texture between butter and cream cheese. In total, across the four portions, I added 250 millilitres, or 8.5 ounces of this cream. Just dollop it all around and it will melt in the oven. Finally, I am sprinkling on about half a tablespoon of brown sugar over the top of each dish. Add as much as you want, and this will turn into a caramel while it bakes. And now they're all ready for the oven. Here's how my ones looked. All that's left to do is to set the grill or broiler in your oven to low, and place the puddings beneath it. I placed them in there for 10 minutes, but you should keep a close eye on yours as every oven is different. Once the cream is melted and you start to see caramelisation and light jarring, it is time to take them out. Mine were looking really good, and you've nailed it if yours look similar. All that's left to do now is garnish them. For the plain ones, I garnish them with some chopped pistachios as well as some more of the brown nuts from earlier. And for the other ones, I gave them a dusting of desiccated coconut. If you're planning a Middle Eastern themed dinner, or want a change from your usual desserts, you can't go wrong with this. It really doesn't take much work, and I guarantee it will be enjoyed. Omali is meant to be served hot, so once it has cooled enough to not burn you, go ahead and serve it. I'm sure you agree it looks insanely good. Now it's time for the taste test. This is just a really satisfying dessert in terms of texture and flavour. It's not overly sweet, and most of your flavour comes from the toppings you add to it. The quality of your milk and cream will really shine here, so go for the premium stuff. In terms of texture, it varies from the soft soak bits to the caramelised layer on top, and absolutely none of it is mushy. The great thing is you could really add any toppings you want, and I'm sure it will turn out great. Give it a try, and let me know what you think of it. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like, share, or subscribe, as it really helps the channel. As usual, all the ingredient amounts and directions are in the description box below, and I'll be back next week with another recipe.